Hello everyone, and thank you for being here. Before I start this message, I had a couple things that I wanted to say. I want to thank everyone for all the love given to my wife's message last week. She did a great job, and we hope it reached those that needed it. The other thing is that the message about forgiveness the week before hers, I said I still had one person left to ask for forgiveness and that I hadn't been able to find her after almost 11 years now. Well, after that message, my wife did what she always does. She searched, found, and even talked to the last person on my list. I was scared, to be honest with you, so I wasn't able to talk to her till the next day. She forgave me. Then we talked the next day after that, and she asked me to forgive her. Of course I did. I didn't really feel there was any need, and she said the same thing to me when I asked for, for her forgiveness. Let me just say, it's such a freeing moment. And actually, my wife and I are planning to have dinner with her and her husband when we go up to Michigan soon here for my brother's memorial. This message, even though it doesn't need to be explained extensively, is extremely important for those that will understand as soon as we get into it. Even if you are not in this situation, you may soon realize someone you know that is going through the torture in their head and you didn't re understand it before. Still, don't pretend to get it just because you listen to this message or hear it from someone else. Remember, if you realize a loved one has an issue, if they will open up to you, then just let them get it out. Then see if you can get them to someone or somewhere that can really help them. As in the last message I did on forgiveness, you need to learn to forgive yourself before forgiving or receiving it from others. Once you forgive yourself, it takes a large weight off your soul and body. Asking for and giving forgiveness can be a great gift on both ends. But, there's always a but, in some cases, can be dangerous to one or both involved. I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Connie, as I think that she can explain this very well. Thank you, Larry. I'm going to try and not be graphic, but some of the examples we will mention, there is no easy way of saying it besides saying what, is, what it truly is. In all the instances that I'm about to list, you may come to a point where you can forgive the person that hurt you. What you do is extremely important for your health and sanity. If you were raped, if you were molested by someone close to you, if someone you love was murdered, being an abused in the past in any way, to later feel you could have done more to protect the ones receiving the abuse from that someone's much stronger or other circumstances. There are more, but I think that's enough to get where we are going together. To forgive is to rid the demons in your head from the bad situations or trauma you went through. All the things we listed earlier have no need to ask for forgiveness. You did nothing to, to deserve the pain involved from them. You say it now if you were and are a victim. It is not my fault. Let's say that again. It is not my fault. When you truly understand that statement and believe it, moving forward will not seem impossible. Even though you are able to forgive someone, doesn't mean you should let them know face to face. Seeing that someone who hurt you and now have forgiven they may begin that the same mistreatment or remind you of it by talking about it to be as mean as possible. To forgive them 
you are just getting that poison that they have caused out of your head. I know many people that were involved in the situations above, including my husband and many other people close to me, and have made the recommendation to not do it in person. Something that can be done is to write a letter to that person. I know that sounds scary, maybe even a little crazy, but they won't be seeing it. It is for you. Mean what you write, read it out loud as many times as you need, and then throw it away or even burn it. Letting go of all the hurt as you do this. If the person is dead, you may visit the grave and read the letter and talk at that grave. They can't talk back. Thank you, Connie, for the help of getting these words out in the right way. I really appreciate it, and I love you very much. There are more things that can be done, but the best thing to do is join a grief group for life issues. Christian recovery groups like Celebrate Recovery, where I started, is for more than drugs and alcohol. They cover all the things I talk about in my messages, including this one. There are two things. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. And the other is conversation with someone who went through the same thing, which are great things that you can find at church or recovery program. I had stuff in my life that wasn't my fault, but I always felt that it was. Once I realized that it wasn't my fault, I was truly able to see who I needed to forgive and where I needed to ask for forgiveness. I couldn't have done it without God or the Christian recovery I went through. If you truly want peace in your life, then follow God. He will put the people in the path to lead you in the right direction. Please, let's pray for those afraid of hurts from the past. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for for letting us be here, the technology to get out to people that are maybe afraid to come out of their house or being able to give the message to people that know their loved ones are hurting and they don't know how to help them, but maybe this gives them a little nudge in the other way. There are so many people that are hurting from the things that were done to them by bad people that did such stupid things that left them just just in crumbles. They need help to get past those issues that are in their head that are causing poison and bad thoughts and everything else that's up there. They need to be freed. The only thing that they can do is say, it's not my fault. Lord, please be with those people to let them understand that. Please help them come across the people that are going to be able to help them. Help them. Let them ask. Finally ask and let them grab your hand. We know that you're always there. Hopefully we can help them realize that you're always there. We love you for everything that you do, Lord. We love you for everyone that you put in our path to help you, help the ones that we love or help us. Lord, thank you for everything. Pray in Jesus' name, amen. I ask that you please be with us next week and that I hope your week is a great one. In the meantime, stay strong, stand firm, stay the path, but most of all, stay faithful. I love y'all so much and hope that you have a very blessed week. Thank you.